Okay, so let's get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining the live streams. The live streams are one of the only chances you guys have of um, watching the whole stream for free without having to pledge. Um, but all, all of my videos that have been posted up are shortened and the full length videos are submitted to patrons and you only have to really subscribe to a dollar a month. That's $12 a year for all free not free with the dollar, but very close to free, very, very dangerously close to free uh, for all eight videos you get um, a month. Uh, so if you can, please support me uh, on Patreon by joining as a watcher. A watcher is just a dollar a month. Um, and uh, for some quick announcements, um, I wanted to let you guys know that the masterclass will soon be out. Um, it will be available on my store as a link to my Gumroad account. Um, where you my Gumroad page, where you guys can see um, uh, more previews, more information about the uh, what, what it includes, but I've covered it a lot in a lot of uh, videos already. So it is um, at least five hours of footage for, uh, I mean, it's more than five hours of footage, but five hours of educational material and then an hour of how to critique yourself, which is also educational material. Um, but uh, it's more of a list of how to critique yourself. There's a self critique. There's how to grayscale the color. There's different skin tones. There's painting a portrait from scratch. It is the ultimate 14 day challenge companion masterclass. And uh, I can't wait for you guys to see it. It'll be released June 1st. Um, tell your friends, anyone interested who wants to learn how to paint a portrait and as uh, in the efficiency in the Istarak way, um, which is really quickly, but not losing quality. That's kind of what my mission statement is. That's kind of what I bring to the table. That's what people come back and book with me for. Uh, is that I teach you learn fast with me you improve quickly, but it's not artificial. It's not fake It's not like a one two three paint by numbers process. Um, it's all real skill. It's based off real science real habit real technique um, it's about uh, 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 real results and long-lasting results. It's not just fake skill or artificial skill and or one trick pony system um, that uh, uh, I'm doing. It's something that is works from the ground up. It starts with fundamentals. It starts with basic geometry, moves up into anatomy and how anatomy is laced into geometry. And then from there, how you customize anatomy to represent specific race, gender, um, uh, age, etc. And then from there, uh, beauty and the levels of beauty, all of that is included uh, for the female portrait in my upcoming masterclass. So look out for it. I'll be uploading it everywhere, everywhere and I'll send out a video announcement for you guys on YouTube and everywhere else as well. Um, and then Portrait Studio, which you'll see me use today, will no longer be on sale uh, after June 1st. The sale will go down. Um, so there was an even lower sale that happened earlier this year. That's been done. But now this is like the second to lowest price it'll ever be. And that's going to be done. It'll go back to medium price, uh, above medium, I guess, mid-level. I don't know what the term is for it. But it'll be in the more expensive range, up to $60 for Portrait Studio, which is the price of a game. Um, and uh, that's when the Masterclass will be released at around $80. Um, so I've asked you guys to vote for these prices. You guys have voted. Um, and 80 to 90 is the bracket that won. Um, and uh, I hope you guys feel like it's worth it. It's a lot of a lot of educational material. It's five hours, um, and I can't wait till you guys uh, uh, get a hold of it. And um, I will be sending out sending it out to a couple people to review it before I release it publicly on June first. So there will be some people who will test it out for me, kind of like beta testing, um, just so I could do last minute edits, anything that I might have missed. But it'll be released June first, and. The, that's linked to the sale drop for Portrait Studio. So just just leaving it out both on one date. That's why it's easy. That way it's easier to remember that everything is happening on June first. Um, so let's get started for today. I wanted to take a look at. Oh, and if you want to submit your work for critique, for instance, the piece that I'm looking at today, um, that's a piece that uh, was submitted to the Reddit. Um, so 
The Reddit is, just go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here. That will take you to my Reddit page where you can submit your art, you can submit your 14-day challenges, you can join in community challenges. The last community winners won free port portfolio reviews by me personally in a per private Discord call. Um, they won a portrait studio copy, they won brushes, um, and uh, yeah, I'm just really... Uh, uh, just bent on getting you all to come here to this channel. We have migrated many a time, um, and I believe this is our resting place. Uh, we're not leaving Reddit anytime soon, so if you ever wanted to join the community, now is the time to do it. This is the last place we'll be, uh, we'll ever move to. This is the only place we'll be. Um, and <clears throat> Uh, it's everything is here everything you can see 14 day challengers You can see people who just want to get critiqued on the stuff they're working on people who want to take on form studies The variety is all here even in just the last three pieces um, And community challenges that are coming up. It's a really cool one Abu wrote it for us and it'll be uh, posted here pinned at the top um, as you can see there's an announcement already here for June 1st and uh, yeah, if you guys want to get your work critiqued and just stay connected to the community and community is a big part of improvement, please consider joining on uh, Reddit. Okay, uh, so let's get started. So I'm looking at this piece. I'm not scared of her. I, all I can see is a very um, uh, 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 just upset <laughs> mermaid. Uh, <laughs> upset is a good blanket word for what's happening to her right now. Uh, maybe she's hungry. Uh, but you have picked a pretty, um, it's, I, would, I guess the word is creepy pose. You got one little eye peeking through some hair that's curtained in front of her face. You've got a sexy but very disturbing, almost bony crawl above the, uh, on, on land from the water surface behind her, crawling towards some enemy near her or prey. She is glowing. Uh, some eerie glow which you have not helped out your thing you helped yourself with because the, the scene is not dark enough but there's another nuanced mistake that you made and it's hard to see it and that's why I spent like 15 minutes posing on portrait studio to get to a similar point so that I could mess with the camera and show you what I mean but what we want to do if this if this woman this uh, this scary creature mermaid uh, was about to prey on you. Wouldn't this be more terrifying? Wouldn't this be more terrifying? You are literally level with her. And if the camera, if the light is behind her, you can barely see her. She is just crawling towards you. And I'm, I keep increasing the field of view and then zooming back in. Um, and that's really helping create that feeling. Like she's reaching towards me. It makes the arm feel a lot closer. We see her tail, and, she, and the way I made her legs is that I wanted to, to feel like she was dragging her tail behind her, like she's kind of like, you know, pulling herself forward on the sand, dragging her tail uh, while she's about to consume this poor victim of hers. And a couple more rocks here, a couple, couple more rocks there, a wider canvas, um, and you're done. And that's what happens when you take good references and you use Portrait Studio. You pretty much are preparing for every possible choice creative choice with the idea that it's a it's a scene from a movie that you are participating in it's a scene from a story that you're participating in so i'm going to try to apply these changes to that because let's let's keep switching back and forth between this shot just imagine it rendered at this level and just take a look at that difference one is more direct she's looking right at the viewer it's more it feels more interactive. Um, and this one, oh, we're looking at it, but it's happening over there. It's happening at a point in the distance where I feel personally safe as the viewer. Oh, I know, yeah, look at these fun little fins that are creative and geometric and uh, kind of robotic and androidy looking. All right. So that's what I mean when your storytelling is weak. You guys don't have anything that invites the viewer to participate. So just enable that again and I'm just gonna widen the canvas now because I want that cinematic immersive wide angle another example of how cinema transformed in its storytelling because that wide angle made it so that we had more to look at more to participate in one thing you could do to help out the glow is to add a smoke effect that catches that but that's a go-to effect 
for any eerie scene that is uh, horror and uh, mix horror mixed with sci-fi. You, know, you always have that smoke. You're never going to escape it. It's just a really cool part of storytelling that shows how um, showing the uh, environment around it kind of helps you build the atmosphere of the scene, meaning like the fog is the only right way to really show the air and show the weather. So it's like allowing the weather to participate as well. Um, and fog is great for that because it could be smoke, it could be it could be fog, it could be uh, some kind of magical element, but it all helps out with the same objective, which is atmosphere and the feeling like you can't see immediately ahead of you because you're being blinded by the fog, blinded by this uh, uh, eerie thing. Anytime a vampire enters a scene, fog. Anytime a character is following or pursuing another character, there's a ton of fog. It's not really just for the cliche or the novelty of it, but it's, um, or that it's being overused. It actually has real elements in helping build the atmosphere around the character. It kind of feels, it makes it feel more realistic because, oh, they have weather in their world and, and it adds that texture to the scene. And just showing where that hair even if it's white, it can still be boggy. It can still, it still reads as white. It can still be messy hair. And I'm just showing where some of those extra strands might be. And then uh, that glow inside her eye, that can just travel all the way down. It is nighttime and it is a pretty strong glow. So we can make it kind of subsurface its way through the hair by using the soft brush on color and kind of letting it come through. See that? It's really nice. But soft brush, um, I'm sorry, color layer isn't the only way to do subsurface scattering. It's actually using the brush on normal. That's how you make something look transparent. You're just flat out painting, normal mode, nude, just completely throwing the, the value in there. And that's how you make something look like it's transparent. Um, and then there's just the general highlight of the hair around that area, kind of loses shadows. And then now that we know the hair is the main focal point, and we understood that the cameras, all that camera work, that exhausting camera work is done. Now we can just focus on having fun, which is the focal point stuff, the hair getting caught on the water surface as she's climbing out. Um, looks more wet. Yeah, hair does darken when it's wet. You're right. And now that I'm 100% sure what the environment, light environment is doing in general, I, I feel more comfortable darkening the upper half of the canvas. Because I've got this water layer here that's making it feel, well that's the fog layer. I've got this water layer here that's really making it feel like there's water. Um, and I just need to find her arm because it's kind of missing. And, uh, and then, I've, yeah, I got that fog layer, which is doing a lot of work. And the fog, you don't have to make it green. You could make it blue, and that would still look cool. You could make it a purpley color. You could make it some kind of reddish color that looks even more creepy because it's it feels like... Um, ghoulish almost supernatural remember purpley red is a really cool supernatural color um for showing evil supernatural that combination of those two and then because now that i finally locked it we can just mess with how much of the of the scene is being filled with her moving forward um and then of course you really do have like the option to increase the field of view even more and just make it a very scary scene um, and then try to push you know the, the placement the camera all of that just like that and uh, you could move the leg so it kind of just I don't want to mess around too much I don't feel like I picked no, I picked the sphere. It's just right under because I put a big diaper on just so I don't get flagged. Um, 
but yeah, you have a lot. You, you should exact same changes I did, same water, same hair, same reflection, same ripples, same smoke, same rocks, but her head is huge in the illustration where here we kind of just did a slight, you know, a slight variation of that. And because it's a tail and not human leg, we, we, we kind of just don't have a lot to work with in that way because it's a tail, it's a cylinder. It doesn't really show off depth of field field of view, sorry, that much. Um, yep, that's all I have for today. Uh, I think the extra negative space on the top of the composition would help to remove the tangent. Um, the tangent, where? This right here? Yeah, there's there's a lot more to be done with this. There's only so much I can do in the time I have. Um, but I hope that the, the, the bit on the lecture about how you need to really think like a movie maker and you have to allow the audience to participate in the illustration because that's a way to validate the danger aspect of the character you've designed. If there's any level of danger, mystery, supernatural to your character's story, background, and personality, the, the camera has to represent that, period. All right. So what am I doing? So um, before, right? So we're just looking at it happening over there. We're not really participating. The glows are there, but there's so many after. We have a more immersive illustration, but it's still kind of, in my opinion, weighed down by what we had before. Um, if she was bonier and you wanted more of a crouch forward, you could still do it that way, but the camera still needs to be somewhere in her direction. If you had to keep this angle, show some rocks and push her back into the distance to show as if she's crawling toward a, another destination. Um, uh, I, I really do like the red fog, um, but the green fog is also an option just to keep it like she lives in this environment. It's a kind of radioactive environment, so she is experimented on and has that radioactivity in her. Spend more time on the hair. That's the main textural. Uh, that's the main focal point here. The only thing that you're is really carrying the image further for you. And uh, I hope these have helped you guys plan your illustrations a little bit better. Thank you everyone for watching. If you want to submit work for Critique Hour, go to isterback.com and go to the Reddit icon here. That'll take you to our Reddit. My masterclass will be released very soon. It is just the full, everything that I know about portraits, painting from scratch, painting a pretty media friendly, portfolio friendly, neutral female portrait. It's gonna be released June 1st um, and it's five plus hours of footage. Uh, you have a, an entire, the entire hours of footage is turned into text as well. So there's a text version of it, notes up to 7,000 words, a uh, mini book version of the tutorial available to those who love lists. Um, there's a list on where to put highlights, where to put blocks, where to put shadows, the six dark spots and what goes into them, what to blend. It, it holds your hand the entire time. There's no way to make a mistake. Um, and it really is just the, the go-to, my full thesis of everything that I know about portraits, the 14-day challenge companion guide. Please spread the word. It'll be available June 1st. And Portrait Studio will no longer be on sale June 1st. So if you want it, you've seen its power today in class. Uh, now's the time to get it at the second lowest price it'll be in the year. The next time it'll be as low as it was at the start of the year is obviously in January, December, January next year. Um, and uh, that's it really for today. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys. Oh, and please consider joining as a $1 patron. That's just $1 a month to get the full classes for free. Uh, I mean, you know what I mean? And uh, and I'll, I'll let this all eight classes, all eight streams in the month. Um, that's $12 a year, which is not much. I'm trying to get everybody on board as a watcher. I know you may say, oh, somebody else will do it, but please consider do doing it yourself. I understand if you don't have a credit card and for some people, even a dollar is too much, but it ju just goes towards a good cause, which is this community. It keeps it stable financially and it also keeps it independent financially, which is the point of pro bono communities like this, um, is that they give 
they give way more than they get and I want it to stay like that. I really want it to be an open educational resource for everyone that comes in. So please consider joining as a dollar patron. It's an untraceable amount for the most part. Uh, but if everybody joins in, it's a huge amount. And my goal is a thousand patrons. Thank you everyone for joining. I'll see you guys next week, Tuesday the 24th, 5 p.m. Eastern. Bye.